Now, every time we talk about things like this to a technical crowd, once in a while you'll get professional people saying, well, that's perpetual motion, it can't possibly be true. Now, if you look at the actual details of perpetual motion, what you find is that there are three different kinds of perpetual motion. And if we look at the um, different types very briefly, we find that the third kind has already been violated by what is now known as a perpetual current in a superconductor. And they go for decades. In fact, the superconductive magnets used for NMR uh, devices have been so well established perpetually that they don't even need recharging, which was amazing to the uh, company that produced them. And the second kind is the converting of heat completely into another form at the same temperature. That's also been violated. It was uh, violated in Nature magazine. My citation is in my feasibility study in Zero Point Energy. And what they used was quantum coherence. Quantum coherence literally allowed you to go from the same temperature, input and output, and yet convert energy. So all we've got left is the first kind. And you know what's interesting about the first kind, of, um, where the input, the output would exceed the input, is basically the, the uh, issue dealing with boundary conditions. When you look at the theory behind perpetual motion, it just comes down to changing the boundary conditions. So there are lots of neat ways to obey thermodynamics or even look at where it doesn't apply. I have journal articles that literally admit in the nano field, nanotechnology, thermodynamics doesn't even apply. Because you're down to the atomic scale where you can't even measure temperature. Uh, besides the fact that, as Tom Bearden talks about, regaging is a nice, easy way to change boundary conditions. You know, all of a sudden, you have new rules for establishing and uh, creating your energy. Mm -hmm.